Satan was the most beautiful angel. He was a cherub. The Bible says, you had the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Satan lived in the Garden of Eden. The Bible says that he was blameless. He also lived on the holy mountain of God. And the Bible says he had all of the precious stones like ruby, topaz, diamond, beryl, onyx, jasper, lapis lazuli, turquoise, emerald, and gold. But then, something happened. Satan was filled with violence, and he sinned. Why? His heart was lifted up because of his beauty, and he thought he was better than God because he was the wisest and most beautiful. Because of this, he was cast away from the mountain of God. Because of his sin, God cast him out, and when he left, Satan took a third of the stars with him, or a third of the angels, to be his demons. So what's happening now? Currently, Satan is working as hard as he can to steal as many people as he can from God. The earth is Satan's domain, and he's the father of lies. So how does this all end? Well, Satan knows that he has a short time on this earth, and when that time is up, Satan will be cast out and sent to a bottomless pit which will be sealed so that he cannot deceive the nations until the thousand years are finished. In the end, Satan will be cast into the lake of fire with all of his demons, and they will be punished for their evil ways. Satan is not the ruler of hell, he's being punished in hell. So in the end, God wins.
just as though heaven had lost. But then Jesus arose with our freedom in hand. That's when death was arrested and my life began. Oh, your grace so free washes over me.
every story, there's a villain. And this is the case in his story, or God's big story. The villain, as we learned this week, is Satan. Now, there are a lot of important things we need to know about Satan. C.S. Lewis wrote a book called The Screwtape Letters, and it's a fictional story about two demons trying to lead this one guy astray. One demon is giving the other one tips and tricks on how to capture him. It's an interesting book, but remember, it's fictional. Anyway, C.S. Lewis says that there are two equal and opposite errors to which our race can fall into in regards to devils. One is the disbelief in their existence. The other is to believe and feel an excessive or unhealthy interest in them. Satan is real. He has a history, personality, and is continually at work in this world. And devils are real. The Bible says that when Satan became evil, he took a third of the angels with him and they became devils, devils. Do you remember why we call sword drills sword drills? The Bible is our only weapon against Satan. The words of God are truth and they are powerful. And the Bible talks about Satan. Okay, now a little preface before we move on. Revelation is one of the most confusing books in the Bible for a couple of reasons. But one of the things that makes it hard to understand is that it uses word pictures to help everyone understand what is going on. Since a lot of Revelation takes place in the heavenly realm, which humans cannot comprehend, it's going to be hard but not impossible. Like we talked about at the beginning of the year, our God is not a God of confusion or tricks. And we can use the rest of the Bible to understand Revelation. Just keep that in mind as we read these next two verses. So sword drill, Revelation, obviously. <laughs> 12, nine, go. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And if we go back a couple of verses to Revelation 12, four, his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to earth. So Satan is called a dragon and he's probably not a real live dragon, but this verse helps us understand his character. Dragons are scary and evil and they love to destroy just like Satan. And in verse four, we see that Satan took with him a third of the stars of heaven. Again, this probably doesn't mean actual stars, but more likely refers to angels. So in Jewish culture, angels are often called stars. So Satan is real and he has fallen angels to help him and he wants to get to us. We can trust that he is real because the Bible tells us he is, but we can also trust that Satan is not someone to be terrified of. Sword drill, Matthew 8, 29, go. And suddenly they cried out saying, what have we to do with you, Jesus, you son of God? Have you come here to torment us before the time? Those are demons talking to Jesus and demons are scared of God. And what do you as a Christian have? The Holy Spirit, the whole God of the universe, the creator of everything, the thing that demons are terrified of. You have that power living inside of you, not just in the same house as you, but with you always. Another sword drill, Deuteronomy 31, eight. And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He'll be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. So again, you do not have to be afraid of Satan or his devils. Well, let's look at your memory verse real quick. First Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. So we can't pretend like he doesn't exist either. This is a hard balance, I get it. Do I pretend that he isn't real because he can't hurt me? Or should I be scared of him so that I can fight back? Well, let me tell you a little secret. Adults struggle with this balance too. <gasps> But I really like what we learned about in the books. Satan tempted Jesus in the desert, right? And what does Jesus do? He fought Satan with scripture, but Satan knows scripture. We learned that from the passage that we read. Satan memorized it so that he can use it against Christians, but Jesus knew the scriptures even better. So he knew that Satan was twisting God's words. The more we know and the better we get at drawing our swords, the easier it is to fight back against Satan. Listen up, this is important. If we do not know what God's truth is, how will we know when the adversary is feeding us a lie?
If we do not know what God's truth is, how will we know when our adversary is feeding us a lie? How will we know when he's tricking us? We also learn from the Bible that Satan doesn't always look like a terrifying dragon. Sword drill, 2 Corinthians 11, 14. <laughs> I was in 1 Corinthians and it's talking about men with long hair. And no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Another version says that even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So I know it sounds like I keep telling you to be scared of Satan, but there's a difference between fear, foolishness, and knowledge. Imagine you're sitting on a helicopter and you're gonna go over the Grand Canyon. The pilot opens the door so you can get a better look. Now. Fear would have you pinned against, oh my gosh, Al. <laughs> now, fear would have you pinned against the other edge of the helicopter as far away from the door as you can be, or maybe not even getting on the helicopter in the first place. Now, foolishness would be not caring about anything at all, and grabbing onto the sides of the helicopter and leaning way out over the Grand Canyon. But knowledge is knowing that if you fell out, it would be really bad, but trusting your pilot not to dump you out the door. And instead, you choose to look out the door the way it was intended. It's the same kind of thing here. We need to be aware of the dangers that are around us so that we don't get hurt. But we have the power of the living God inside of us, always. So there's no reason to be terrified of Satan. So combating Satan, Jesus fought Satan with the Bible. We too can use our swords, the Bible, to fight Satan. But here's another thing we can use, prayer. Prayer is our direct connection to God. We can talk to him wherever, whenever, and about whatever. One of my favorite things to do when I'm scared or feel like I'm being targeted by Satan is to pray through Bible verses. Awana has been so stinking amazing for me because I have close to a thousand Bible verses memorized. And you will too if you keep, and you will too if you stay in Awana through high school. And you will too if you stay in Awana through high school. Truth and prayer will help us fight Satan. And we know what happens in the end. God will eventually win against Satan. So we can feel secure in the fact that we are on the winning team. As we close, I'd like to pray through some scripture with you guys. I'm going to put the verses on your screens. Go ahead and put away distractions like your phones and your book and read these verses as I pray over you guys. Hey God, thank you for being with us today. In your word, you tell us that we are from God and we are your children and that you have overcome the evil around us because you are greater than he who is in the world. Lord, we live in this world, but we do not fight the same way because of you and your divine power, which will demolish the evil strongholds. Lord, help us take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ because you are truth. Lord, you do not leave us defenseless against the devil. Thank you for giving us armor. This week, help us to be strong and to stand our ground. Help us put on the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the shoes of the gospel of peace and help us to take the shield of faith so that we can extinguish the flaming arrows of the evil one. God, protect us with the helmet of salvation and arm us with the sword of the spirit, which is your word, the Bible. Finally, we give thanks because you gave us the victory through Jesus Christ. Help us remember this week that in all of this, we are more than conquerors through you because you love us. Thank you for telling us all these things so that we can have peace. God, I know we will have trouble and we will do hard things in this world, but that because you overcame the world, we can take heart and have your peace. And all God's people said, amen. All right, I love you all and I'll catch you next time.